Alrighty. Well, hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Monterey Bay Aquarium here live on YouTube. My name is Patrick. I work at the aquarium here in social media, and we are live right now at our diving seabird exhibit here. In here, we have multiple different species of alcid, diving seabird. Hey, good morning, Epic Sandwich. Hey, good morning, Rohan. Thanks for being here. Yeah, puffins right there. We've got uh, three different species here of alcid diving seabirds. Uh, they are a type of seabird that we have out here in the Monterey Bay along the Northeast Pacific. And right here up front getting us started off are the tufted puffins right here. Tufted puffins are birds that are found out here in the Monterey Bay sometimes. In fact, local whale watch boats were able to see some tufted puffins here recently. They're called tufted puffins because of the tufts out here behind their eyes there. We've got those long feather eyebrows and uh, in the breeding season, those are uh, when those are growing out and they have, oh, hello. Nicely done, you knew you were live on YouTube just then. And so we also have this white face here along the side there of the puffin that's gonna also be part of the breeding plumage. And on top of the beak here, that sort of cream colored uh, base there, that's known as a beak sheath. And these birds have that during the breeding season. So these tufted puffins are getting ready for their dates here at the aquarium. We might have some couples uh, here getting ready soon. We've got these nest boxes here in the background. Hey, good morning, Herwoo. I hope that's how I pronounce that. Thanks for joining us. So tufted puffins, one of those uh, types of alcid. Uh, alcids are diving seabirds that um, they're different from penguins, although they'll look very similar once we get over to the common murs, which are these two birds here in the background. Look a little bit like bowling balls over there on the side. Actually, researchers have painted bowling balls and add little beaks on them. Bowling pins, I should say. That's what I meant to say, bowling pins there. Uh, and currently one of them's playing with a Looks like a coconut husk. That's very fun. So these two birds over here, they look like bowling pins rather. And uh, researchers have uh, painted uh, bowling pins to look more like common murs to help repopulate certain uh, breeding islands out here along the coast. It turns out that common murs and if many of these other uh, shorebirds, they're similar to people in that they really need there to be good reviews on Yelp out there before they'll go and settle in a particular spot. So uh, in certain areas where there were fewer of these birds than there should have been, most of the murs were like, oh, I guess that's not a very good spot to go and have my egg. But if you add a whole bunch of fake murs, uh, then it looks like a hopping uh, area to go and have your have your eggs there. And so many of the nesting areas out here along Highway 1, uh, many of them have been repopulated by having those bowling pin murs over there, letting the murs know, hey, this is actually not such a bad spot there to go and have their eggs. So over here, we've got, again, tufted puffins there. We've got common murs here in the background. And very nice for us, we have our two pigeon guillemots right there next to each other. Pigeon guillemots are actually out here in the Monterey Bay right now. Some of them are nesting beneath our decks here at the moment. If you visit the aquarium, you'll hear uh, from February on these very loud trills of these birds as they find each other. They tend to mate with the same bird if they can find each other every year. And they'll uh, chirp and chirp and chirp catch up on the last six months of foraging out at sea and then they will go and have their egg beneath the deck and that is uh, happening right now here at the aquarium. So if you come here to the bay, you'll see those pigeon guillemots at the aquarium. So again, these diving seabirds, these are, oh, let me see. Saw one that had blue arm under. Oh, that's a good question. So if you saw some blue there, there's a good chance you were looking at a cormorant. We do have some cormorants out here that um, uh, we have some cormorants out here that will have some bright blue along their face and uh, underneath their underneath their wings. I'm not exactly sure which bird that would be. Could be a cormorant. Uh, if you have a photo, feel free to send it to us and we will uh, apprise it for you. But so again, alcid diving seabirds, they're sort of our do the different species ever fight? You know, they, they get along pretty well in here. Uh, every so often, one bird will be in a personal bird space that, and then they'll get let uh, known very quickly that that's where the other bird wants to be. But no, they get along very well out there. A lot of these birds are nesting together. 
in these offshore islands, especially uh, up north. If you go to um, Canada and Alaska, you'll see a lot of these bird colonies right there next to each other. And so these birds, they're sort of our northern hemisphere counterpart to penguins and that these are diving seabirds that are grabbing up food uh, by, and they're flapping their wings around underwater. However, all of these birds can fly and um, penguins are all found at the equator at the Galapagos and further south. These birds are found further north. And so these, uh, these birds here that you see diving around here in the northern hemisphere, they kind of do the same ecological role that penguins have a little bit further uh, south here on the planet. So, uh, what else do we want to talk about with these birds? Oh, we should mention that uh, these birds, you, they, they show up pretty seasonally here at the aquarium uh, in, the, in the Monterey Bay area. And this year they've been a few months behind what uh, most people expect. Uh, these birds are intimately tied to what's happening out there in the wild and uh, wherever the food goes is where they're gonna show up. And uh, these birds have to be very good at predicting where the food is going to be to be successful. And so these are kind of your literal seabird canaries out there for what's happening out here along the coast and as climate change continues to uh, affect what's going on out there in the ocean as different uh, cycles of uh, ocean conditions go back and forth these are a great example of an animal that move along with those uh, changing systems out there and so they can really let us know what's going on in real time out here in the Monterey Bay and so if you're a birder you may have noticed that these birds are a few months behind schedule in what they should be doing which is a good way for us to track what is going on out there as the ocean continues to change there have we thought about streaming on Twitch yes we have Rohan yeah we're uh, getting getting ready to uh, to start doing a little bit more of that uh, thanks for letting us know. Yeah, we were uh, streaming on Periscope and on Facebook just a little bit ago And so we figured we'd hop on YouTube and give a, a quick little live there But uh, not to worry Monterey Bay Aquarium on Twitch. You're hearing it here first Which puts a whole bunch of pressure on uh, on Emily and <laughs> and me here. You'll prime sub perfect. Thanks Rohan. We'll, we'll keep you to that uh, But yeah, we're gonna try to keep all the things live going here at the aquarium because there's nothing better and sharing our exhibits with all of you folks out there live in real time. So you can visit the aquarium on your own time from wherever you are. Okay, well, we are pretty much open to the public here. Yep, it's 10 o'clock. So I am going to sign off right now. Uh, but thank you so much for following us here at the Monterey Bay Aquarium here on YouTube. Hope you enjoyed the seabirds here and uh, we will see you again soon at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your day wherever you are around the world. See you again soon, everybody.